Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Thanks for joining us for this Friday. Uh, so um, today we have today we have a seminar which will be given by Dr. Alexander Vasilyev uh, from uh, Itmo University and from Faculty uh, for Research and Engineering, and he will be talking about optical uh, electronic systems for monitoring and control in the uh, technogenic uh, environment and industry. So, Alexander, please. Thank you. Uh, I hope you can, you can uh, hear me loud and clear. Yep. So, okay. So yes, uh, my team for our optical seminar is uh, Optical Electronic System for Monitoring and Control uh, in the Technogenic uh, Environment and Industry. So I will talk about, uh, about some uh, devices and systems that we uh, developed uh, in our research center. So for today, we will talk about uh, some information about the research center for optical electronic engineering, where I'm uh, working and where we uh, develop and research this kind of systems. Uh, and then we will talk about uh, actually four um, different um, systems that we developed, uh, that we research for different tasks, for different uh, problems. It uh, will be a system for deflection measuring system uh, for floating dry docks. Uh, it will be uh, some visual based system for long term uh, remote monitoring uh, that's used for a large civil uh, engineering structure. And uh, another two uh, develops, uh, another two system which we developed. It will be a high precision absolute linear encoder and uh, high energy radiation imaging system. Uh, this is uh, what we will uh, discuss for today's seminars. So uh, let's get started uh, and a few words about uh, Research Center for Optical Electronic uh, Engineering. Uh, this center is uh, based on Itmo University and uh, the center is uh, developed a uh, different type of optical electronic systems like a video information measurement system like uh, research in image fusion uh, usually we're using for this research uh, visible and thermal vision monitoring system uh, another direction that we uh, research uh, do some research it's uh, optical animation systems some color and spectral analysis systems and uh, image analysis and processing that is another uh, very big part for our research. Uh, it's uh, in digital image processing operations. So um, for our uh, research, cent uh, research center, it's a center for uh, more about for applied optics, for real products uh, that we can uh, uh, sell it to our customers and uh, uh, present it as uh, uh, products for our customers. And uh, also, besides uh, that we are doing some development and research uh, processing, we actually do some event, uh, education uh, for our students. So we have some uh, educational program that's uh, about uh, optical electronic system design and it's about uh, digital image processing so we have some uh, master degree for our students and we have some uh, phd degree and uh, for specialization of optical and optical electronic device systems so this is two direction that we have for our research center it's uh, development and education and actually we have uh, um, a lot of different uh, problems and tasks for uh, our research, but the most uh, important uh, problems and the most important area that we are building our system, it's uh, systems for uh, technogenic, technogenic uh, environment, for monitoring this environment. Uh, there are some different problems with this environment that we consider in our uh, development and research uh, operations. So it's uh, for uh, monitoring for building collapse, it's uh, 
monitoring for foundation deformation and roof destruction, uh, deflection of the uh, large structure and construction, and so on. So we need to control this uh, uh, these uh, problems. We need to control these uh, areas and try to build that kind of systems that can control these uh, parameters for different uh, in the different problems. So for this type of uh, uh, for this type of uh, problems, uh, we have some main structural scheme uh, for our monitoring systems. In this uh, scheme, we uh, this type of scheme we uh, consider for different uh, systems. It's a very universal uh, decision, uh, and we build on it on a different uh, systems. So in this uh, structural scheme, uh, we have some base unit. Uh, in this base unit, we have uh, some detectors. Uh, usually it's uh, CMOS detectors that can uh, give us some information about special uh, distribution of, uh, uh, of light uh, that uh, going through the lens. Uh, then we have some processing using uh, where we uh, do some uh, algorithm, do some processing. And also we have some reference mark that uh, usually tied with uh, that uh, building. So with uh, uh, some constructions and we can see how this reference mark, uh, how they going, how they uh, displaced uh, and we can uh, find it uh, in a CMOS uh, there is special uh, coordinates so for reference uh, mark we're using for some uh, optical elements it could be uh, some uh, emitting uh, diet light emitting diet it could be some uh, refractive elements and so on. and uh, Usually this reference mark is should be on a so stable benchmark and we can uh, control this reference mark and find the uh, displacement of this reference mark. And based on this structure, uh, we have some structure for uh, distributed systems. Uh, in this system, we have uh, different channels. Uh, there could be a lot of different channels that uh, combined into one uh, network uh, using some interface. And we can uh, take uh, some information from these uh, channels and then we can uh, put it into database and save this information or we can uh, give this information uh, for some uh, remote control for uh, kind of for uh, users and he can uh, try to decide what he can do it with this uh, information. So the first systems that we will uh, see for today, it's a system a deflection measure system for uh, for putting the right dogs. It's a very uh, big uh, project for our research center. We have a uh, a lot of different uh, customers for these systems and uh, the purpose uh, of these systems it's uh, operation control of deformations and deflections uh, loaded uh, elements of extended uh, very long uh, industrial and residential uh, structure so usually this type of system we can use it for uh, floating dry docks also we can use it for energy factory or some uh, pipelines, uh, construction or bridge. So any objects that uh, have uh, extended uh, long uh, elements, uh, we can using this type of system, uh, deflection system. And uh, the systems, it's uh, included the next one uh, units. We have uh, we have some uh, base units. Uh, 
that uh, considering that in this base uh, unit we have a CMOS uh, detector, we have some reference marks, and we have some processing uh, unit. So this type of system we can uh, use it for different uh, tasks and try to uh, measure uh, deflection or deformations of these uh, big uh, uh, objects. So there's a principle of operations for flying, uh, flying dry docks. Uh, so a few words about uh, uh, dry docks. So this is uh, a big uh, buildings actually uh, that's uh, floating in the sea or in the oceans. And uh, if for ships uh, needs to some repair operations, uh, maybe some uh, technical operations. Uh, so the ships is going to this uh, docks, Oops, sorry, uh, to this docks and uh, uh, dock is uh, going to up and there is uh, could be some deformations for find dry docks. So our dock could change this uh, uh, straight line and go to uh, this deformation. So there is a large chance that uh, dogs uh, could uh, could be damaged and uh, just uh, go to underwater. So for this type of uh, systems, actually for this type of objects, we present this uh, system that uh, have some uh, base units that we. Uh, installed in the dry docks and we have uh, some reference marks. This reference marks is uh, using light emitter diode and uh, this reference marks it's a very hard tied with construction of dry docks so we can find that uh, this reference mark or this uh, elements of dry docks uh, is going to deformation deformations so we can uh, talk about this displacement so for uh, developed this uh, type of systems uh, we choose and calculate its different uh, main units we uh, construct this uh, different units so one of the most important uh, thing for this type of system it's a uh, processing unit and for image processing it's very important that uh, this uh, unit should uh, do this operation very fast because we have uh, a lot of informations for each pixels we need to uh, do operation for localization of reference marks we need to calculate these positions and then we need to uh, give this information to our operator. So there is a lot of uh, operations for this processing unit. So the, uh, the most uh, uh, the most uh, sorry um, so they uh, usually we're using this uh, FPGA unit uh, because we can use his powerful uh, computing uh, uh, properties uh, and we can uh, calculate very fast uh, for our image that we take uh, from CMOS. Also we have a unique uh, optical system. This optical system is uh, uh, developed by our center. Uh, this uh, optical system has a focal length for 200 millimeter, so we can uh, measure our uh, displacements with uh, very precise accuracy uh, for long uh, distance. Uh, for reference mark, we're using uh, LED, uh, LED in uh, infrared spectrum. Uh, that because for flying dry docks, it's very important that. Uh, there is no uh, any elements that will be uh, 
uh, that will uh, radiate some uh, illumination, some light uh, that will be visible for uh, human and uh, dry dogs. So there is using a uh, very powerful LED in the infrared, in the short infrared uh, wavelength. It's uh, about uh, 90, uh, 900 uh, nanometer. So actually this uh, decision that we're using infrared light, it's uh, very useful for us because for flying dry dogs, there's atmospheric uh, distributions with a very humidity uh, on it. So it's uh, much better work with uh, this type of atmospheric distributions. And for uh, detector, we're using uh, detector uh, from Aptina. This uh, now it's uh, on the semiconductor uh, with active pixels about uh, five uh, megapixels and pixel size about 2.2 uh, micrometer. So we uh, develop this uh, uh, circuit board, this PCB for this type uh, of sensor. And uh, why we do this, it's because uh, we can change any parameters of this uh, sensor and we can uh, modify it uh, algorithm in this way that we want to use it uh, for much more uh, precise and precise measure. So uh, here's some, um, some systems that we uh, developed. It's one of the first uh, systems. Uh, it was in uh, 2000, 2005, I think, systems. Uh, and for these systems, we get uh, air about uh, 0 0.4 millimeters uh, for a distance uh, 50 meters. But uh, this is in uh, laboratory uh, conditions uh, for different uh, conditions. It could be much uh, worse for this air. So uh, in this type of conditions, we can get this uh, air. Uh, also, we need, uh, uh, need to uh, control that uh, our system is stable, so we need to uh, control any uh, conditions on it. For example, we need to control the temperature of this uh, unit and this base unit, because if we, as, uh, is if uh, for our base unit, we have some uh, temperature uh, changes, some gradient for temperatures. Uh, we can get uh, much more errors because we have some deformation for optical system, we have deformation for uh, constructions, um, and uh, that uh, could give us uh, much more errors for resultant measurement. Uh, and actually for these uh, systems, we have a few modifications. We develop a few modifications. Actually fly dry, uh, floating dry docks. Uh, um, usually it uh, has two modifications. It's uh, 50 meter dry docks or 100 meter uh, dry docks. Uh, I'm sorry, dock length. It's uh, usually uh, 100 uh, meters or 200 meters. So for this uh, different types of uh, docks, uh, we construct uh, different modification for this, uh, our monitoring systems. Um, and for about um, the last 10 years, years uh, we have uh, different customers that we uh, sell our systems. It's from customers from uh, Vietnam, uh, Singapore, uh, and a few systems from uh, uh, for uh, Russia. And another modifications, these modifications uh, for very big uh, and large uh, dogs. It's dogs with uh, 200 meters. So for these modifications, um, we have uh, accuracy about uh, 5 uh, millimeter. 
and uh, we have some customers that we uh, to sell it our systems. It's from Equatorial Guinea and from Russia. So another system that we will uh, see for today, it's a vision-based system for long-term remote monitoring uh, of our civil engineering. And actually at this type of system, it's uh, just a kind of, uh, modification for uh, previous systems. Um, but it has only one uh, channel and uh, we can uh, control uh, a lot of different uh, reference marks and uh, why we need to control this type uh, of uh, why we need to use this type of monitoring that because for uh, zero engineering uh, construction and facility we need to uh, constant and uh, thorough monitoring uh, this displacement uh, because for a big construction for big buildings there's a lot of uh, deformation could be uh, uh, could be fine uh, so we need to control the deformations and uh, prevent uh, this uh, catastrophic uh, uh, with these uh, buildings and constructions so uh, actually we have some uh, customer for this system and we have some technical requirements for these uh, systems uh, this type of system is the first uh, purpose it was for using in a stadium so we have a very big distance uh, between this system and uh, our reference marks it uh, should be this distance should be from 10 until uh, 15 meters and the measurement range uh, actually the displacement of uh, our uh, reference marks in uh, each directions x and y it should be about uh, 18 millimeters uh, and for measurement error uh, should be about 0 0.5 millimeters and another very important uh, requirement it's uh, temperature so this system uh, should be used for temperature from minus 60 until plus uh, 40 uh, it's very uh, big range range for this uh, temperature and it was uh, very difficult to uh, realize this system for these uh, tasks so this Yes. Uh, so before you proceed too far, I didn't quite get the uh, main operational principle of your detectors. So if you have a single camera, you're only able to capture the two angles for each mark. So uh, it's not clear to me how do you transform those angles into millimeters. So do you use some additional information about the, the your your marks or something like that? Uh, actually, we uh, measure only linear displacement for uh, our buildings for our constructions so we just uh, tie it uh, our reference marks and uh, we uh, monitor the displacement in a linear uh, positions so we can use it uh, for controlling how uh, our buildings how our parts of buildings is uh, deformated uh, uh, going to a diff for deformations or uh, getting some uh, displacement for this uh, element so uh, only based on this uh, linear displacement we just uh, can say it, uh, the behavior of these buildings yes yes i, I see this but uh, again, if mm -hmm. you have a, your optics, it's an infinity corrector system. This means that uh, your CCD uh, is imaging the angles, so the uh, the total angle and the uh, so the one, the vertical one, okay, theta. And so each pixel corresponds to a specified direction, and you do not know. Uh, so the camera does not know the distance to your mark. For this reason. You cannot, without knowing the distance to the mark, you cannot so estimate any its absolute position in the space. Mm -hmm. So, do you somehow account for the position of the marks? 
is we have uh, some calibration procedure. I will talk about uh, a little bit later. And okay. We can see about how it works. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so structure of the system. Uh, once again, it's uh, the this uh, main structure that we uh, consider in the previous uh, slides. Uh, we have some uh, base units. Uh, base units with uh, with our CMOS and with our lens, uh, and we have another processing unit that uh, doing some processing with image and uh, a number of reference mark that we uh, uh, tied with our big buildings and we can uh, we can control this reference mark and uh, based on it we can find each uh, of reference marks or we can find uh, the number of this reference mark and we can control exactly uh, exactly this uh, reference mark that we want to control uh, and this uh, system it's actually uh, one of the point of uh, distributed system so this only a one channel for a big distributed uh, system design and uh, all of this uh, is interfacing with uh, RS uh, 400 and uh, again uh, and uh, talk about uh, oh, I'm sorry uh, and uh, Yes, uh, so uh, design and structure of this uh, base unit. So it's very simple design, but uh, as its uh, system should be used for very harsh environments, uh, there is a very uh, strong uh, housing, very strong case. We have some drying cat uh, cartridge for uh, removed some humidity. Uh, and we have some uh, laser model uh, that we use for uh, visualizing uh, various uh, reference marks. So uh, the reference mark, here's uh, our reference mark. And here's some uh, properties of this reference mark that we using a very, uh, uh, using a structure of this uh, reference mark that we know the distance between the LED and we can use it on uh, this, uh, this uh, properties this uh, uh, length uh, that we know uh, for collaborations so based on this information that uh, between this uh, LED we have about uh, 20 millimeters uh, based on this information, we can calibrate it and understand it in what kind of distance we have our reference marks. And because we have uh, each, uh, for each reference mark, we have uh, uh, relevant um, uh, numbers of this mark, so we can calibrate it for each marks, uh, all of our systems. And here's uh, our systems, this prototype of this design and prototype of reference marks. So hardware and software, it's also uh, this uh, software was uh, created for FPGA. So there's uh, a very really lot of problem with this uh, uh, software uh, because it's very hard to uh, coding for this uh, FPGA units uh, but uh, uh, there is no any change that uh, CPU can use it for this uh, processing so we just using once again using FPGA because it's much more faster than another uh, processing unit so for this uh, tasks uh, as I said, uh, we have uh, image of reference marks, and for these reference marks, we have uh, 
uh, once again we have this uh, distance that we know in a millimeter so on this uh, image we can find uh, each elements we can find each uh, led and then we can calculate uh, the distance between each elements and we can find that this uh, image that this uh, uh, image of uh, light that we um, have on the image that this is uh, our reference marks uh, based on information that uh, the elements on the image uh, could be considered as a square so if we find the square objects we can uh, set that we uh, localize it uh, our reference mark another uh, another properties for this software that we can control our uh, detectors so we can use uh, all of opportunity that give us uh, this uh, detectors we can change uh, uh, region of interest and uh, based on this we can uh, do uh, a multiple uh, measurements so there's uh, so figure is a graphic and this one uh, measurement is based on a multiple uh, measurement in a very small area small area for each uh, for each uh, reference marks so as much we we uh, have uh, numbers of these uh, images much more uh, precise uh, measure we have for our results uh, and here's some field test it was uh, our system uh, built and created so we just uh, uh, try some field test it was uh, since uh, December until April it's very harsh uh, temperature uh, gradient for our system uh, because there was a lot of uh, negative temperature and then there was uh, a temperature that was uh, um, in a plus so there's a different gradient um, for temperature and here's the result that we get from this uh, field uh, test uh, so in this almost five months we get uh, this uh, numbers of results so after analysis for these results we get that uh, accuracy uh, for this uh, measurement in a field test uh, we're getting about uh, uh, about 0 0.3 millimeter for distance uh, about 30 meters but uh, when we analyze this results we can find that uh, our measurement our result for measurement it's very uh, it has a correlation with temperature and uh, when temperature is uh, increasing uh, we can find that our measurement our deviations is also increasing so after that we decide to improve our system and uh, uh, edit some uh, temperature sensor and try to uh, compensate this uh, temperature uh, environment and try to get much more uh, much more precise measurement for results uh, and the, another systems it's uh, ready for industry it's high precision absolute linear encoder uh, and very important thing for this uh, systems uh, that this system is based on a standard calibrated scale so the purpose is uh, for increasing in accuracy of position of different uh, machines uh, like uh, CNC machines or for weights, uh, maybe for uh, mining machine uh, to control the tool uh, for this machine, uh, machine uh, uh, position of this tool relative of work uh, work uh, piece 
uh, and uh, give that information in real time for operator of these machines. So uh, for this, we need to solve some tasks. It's about uh, position control process automation. Uh, automation is increasing the uh, complexity and accuracy of machine operations uh, because we have a very uh, complex, uh, complex uh, details that uh, create in these machines. And another task is for modernizations of uh, industrial equipment. So these tasks uh, should be solved with uh, this type of encoder. And another uh, technical requirement that uh, we have from our customers. So for this encoder, we have a uh, total distance about uh, two meters. Uh, the resolution is about 0 0.5 micrometer. And accuracy for this encoder should be less than five micrometers for all of this travel distance for two meters. Uh, and this encoder should be used with uh, standard scales. Uh, this standard scales is already uh, using for uh, machines, uh, different machines. Uh, so to uh, for modernization of this machine, we just need to create and develop this uh, encoder that produce these uh, scales uh, that we're already using. So this scales is uh, based on Invar LA. Uh, it's very low temperature. Uh, it's very uh, low temperature coefficient for linear of linear explanations, and uh, with the standard scales, we have uh, indexes uh, that's spacing uh, between them uh, about one millimeter. And the error of these uh, indexes is about two, uh, 20 micrometers. So we need to uh, calculate the position of our encoder based on this uh, scale and try to calculate uh, and get a result uh, less than five micrometers. So for this uh, type of system, uh, we develop these structures. Uh, actually, this uh, encoder should be uh, uh, absolute uh, linear encoder, but for this uh, standard scale, we don't have any marks. So we can say uh, what kind of position we have for our indexes, even for millimeters. So we need to uh, use, uh, we need to create some uh, absolute uh, scale that we can use it for our uh, uh, linear encoder. And uh, to decide this problem, we just uh, use a dual channel uh, principle for our structures. So we have some uh, rough channel and we have some precise channel. And for rough channel, we're just uh, getting information about uh, millimeter, this very uh, rough precise. It's about uh, 0 0.5 millimeter uh, accuracy for this uh, rough channel. And this rough channel is uh, developed uh, based on this uh, absolute magnetic scale. and. Uh, to get information from, from this absolute magnetic scale, we just need uh, some magnetic uh, devices without these devices and uh, getting on this uh, information of this uh, uh, absolute positions, we can calculate it, uh, our absolute position with uh, precise channel. So for precise channel, we're using uh, already the standard uh, linear scale. And we're using uh, our uh, digital camera and uh, some optical systems. Uh, and for illumination of this uh, scale, we're using uh, laser. Uh, after doing uh, readout operations from this uh, rough channel and from precise channel, we can calculate uh, absolute position uh, with very precise accuracy. And here's some uh, function uh, to calculate it, uh, our 
resulting positions. Uh, in this function, we can see that to calculate it, uh, our results, so this our results, we need to uh, find our uh, positions from a uh, precise channel, and we're getting informations uh, the image that we are uh, getting with uh, digital camera and we need some function that uh, describe behavior for absolute encoder uh, our magnetic encoder uh, describe some uh, calibration of uh, field of view and uh, some calibration information about indexes uh, on the scale because each indexes has own accuracy and has his own uh, uh, error. So we need to uh, to need uh, get information about this error. Uh, and here's uh, optical model. So we developed this optical model and uh, simulate uh, our developed. Uh, systems and this uh, model we have some uh, scale that we model as a Boolean model uh, we have model of laser some uh, lenses a mirror and uh, some de detector so based on this uh, model we get some images that uh, represent the result uh, what we get with different uh, parameters and based on this uh, model, we uh, choose some uh, detectors. Uh, for this uh, task, we uh, choose CCD de detector because uh, it has much more sensitive, uh, light sensitive. Uh, and we choose some uh, laser, laser on the wavelength of 655 nanometers. And uh, based on these uh, units, we construct some experimental setup uh, that included all of these units. Uh, and we get the first uh, images that we can use for uh, image processing and get the real result uh, for uh, measurements. So in this experimental setup, we have uh, small part of the scale that we uh, try to measure uh, we have some magnetic scale it's just a, a magnetic tape uh, and we have some uh, digital camera with optical system and with uh, laser and there's result of these images so after getting these results we starting to create algorithm for image processing and the algorithm should be uh, very simple and should be uh, very fast so uh, to, uh, to get this uh, to solve these uh, problems uh, we're creating the next one algorithms uh, so based on the images that we get we just uh, summarize all these pixels uh, on the lines and we get this uh, one-dimensional function so based on this one-dimensional function we can find uh, find these uh, indexes and uh, try to calculate the position of this uh, uh, find it uh, indexes so there is uh, two steps uh, algorithm for uh, algorithm for uh, localization on uh, for localization uh, indexes and then we calculate it with the uh, algorithm of uh, wave sum uh, calculate the position of each uh, indexes and here's the prototype uh, actually design uh, prototype uh, it also uh, has FPGA because we need to fast uh, calculating. Uh, here's some 
optical system. There's uh, magnetic elements for absolute encoder and there's uh, our detectors. And there's constructions. Uh, this uh, case was uh, uh, was created from uh, one piece of, piece of metals and, uh, uh, and building this type of systems. Uh, and after that, uh, we uh, test in our laboratory and then we uh, get this experimental test on the certified setups. It was uh, underground about uh, three meters. Uh, there was uh, some vibration isolation. There was some uh, temperature compensations and uh, very stable condition for our tests. So in this setup, we get the result about uh, uh, about standard deviation about uh, 0 0.55 micrometers. So um, there's a result for this uh, encoders that we get in this uh, in this projects. So the last one uh, projects. It's actually it's more about research than uh, development. It's a, a research for high energy radiation imaging system. So the idea for these applications, it's uh, for visualization uh, of radiation monitoring. Uh, it could be used for, uh, for industry and for uh, environment, uh, civil environment for radiation monitoring. So why this uh, idea is came up to our uh, research, research center is because uh, maybe 10 years ago there was a new type of detectors. It's a, a silicon photomultiplier that's very sensitive for uh, photon slides, lights, uh, and this uh, detectors is very simple for using and actually based on this uh, silicon pho photomultiplier uh, today is created uh, an array of this uh, silicon photo uh, photomultiplier so we can create uh, high energy uh, imaging system so if we have some uh, radiation from some uh, objects with high energy radiations we can uh, Visualize, uh, visualize uh, these uh, radiations based on these uh, structures. So we have some uh, coding apertures, we have some uh, scintillator, and we have some detector based on this uh, silicon photomultiplier, and we have some uh, electronics pad. Uh, after some image processing, and based on this second channel, we can create uh, a fusion image that uh, we can use for uh, monitoring of this high, uh, high energy radiations. Uh, and actually for us, it very, uh, was uh, very interesting to uh, research the behavior of this uh, coded aperture because we never uh, use this type of uh, elements and we started uh, research in this area. So how works this uh, coded apertures? Uh, this uh, apertures is actually, it's like, it's work like a pinhole uh, based on some uh, emanation from these objects. We can, uh, we can uh, get uh, the image that's uh, in the literature it's called uh, shadowgram. It's just a, a distribution for our lights that uh, goes through this uh, coded apertures. And based on image processing with this shadowgram, uh, based on operation for reconstruction, re uh, reconstruction, we can uh, find uh, the image that will be uh, reconstructed, and we can use it uh, this. Uh, type of elements like uh, uh, lenses 
in our optical systems, but uh, for high energy uh, radiation, we, we can use any optical elements. So this the only opportunity to get uh, image from this uh, high energy radiation. So we need to use uh, coded apertures. So we started to research in this area and we try different type of uh, coded apertures. Each, uh, uh, each coded aperture has own properties, has own uh, parameters that we can use uh, for better quality. And here's a uh, difference between rank for uh, Amura coded apertures and what we can get uh, for resulting images. And we started the physical uh, test for this uh, code aperture. And we started to uh, create this code aperture. And this uh, different type uh, approach for uh, implementation for this uh, code aperture. It was uh, research. It was uh, just a laser cutting operations. It was uh, laser printing. But the quality of this code temperature is very poor uh, for using. So the next uh, technology that we used for this, uh, for creating this uh, code temperature, it was laser ablations operations. So we get much more quality uh, for this uh, code temperature. And then we using this aperture for experimental setup. Uh, and uh, in this setup, we have uh, some coded aperture that we uh, get it from uh, laser ablations. Uh, we have some uh, objects that we try to uh, try to uh, see, and we have some uh, spec uh, wide spectrum lamp, some uh, source of light. So this uh, experimental, it was for visible image. It was for uh, visible radiations. And uh, here's the result that we get. So here's uh, on the left side, it's image object. Uh, and the next one is shadow ground that we get from coded apertures. And then uh, we constructed images. So quality, of course, it's uh, pretty much uh, bad quality uh, for these images. But uh, if we scale this result for high energy, it will be uh, much more uh, bad than it was for today. So for our further uh, work, for our uh, further, uh, research, we just uh, try to adapting this result for uh, high energy radiations and we try uh, to study some uh, effects on aperture parameters on image quality and actually we're starting to create uh, uh, coded aperture not for uh, visible spectrum but for high energy and try to experimental uh, experiment with uh, this type of coded aperture so the conclusion uh, for my uh, presentations, um, um, once again, uh, the monitoring in this uh, technogenic environment, it's a very important task that we uh, try to solve uh, maybe for the last uh, 20 years. Uh, here's some uh, designed uh, systems uh, for different tasks, for different problems, uh, and some uh, publications uh, where we can find more information about. Uh, actually, this is not the only task that we try to solve. Uh, we have a different projects uh, that uh, I didn't uh, say any words about. Uh, this uh, different projects for uh, uh, atomic stations. It's for controlling the special X uh, for turbines, uh, different projects for uh, minerals to analyze uh, minerals um, based on this express analysis systems. Uh, and uh, 
different projects for image processing and uh, one of this uh, most uh, important thing for me actually it's uh, research for image fusions uh, and uh, we try to combine different uh, image from different uh, spectrum thermal visions and uh, visible range and try to combine to get much more information for resulting images so this is another uh, direction another area for our uh, research that we uh, consider in uh, our research center so thank you all for your attentions and i will be glad to answer it for your questions Alexander, thank you very much so colleagues it's, it's time for questions um, probably I've got one at least. Yes. So I'm wondering regarding still the first part when you're measuring, uh, you perform the optical monitoring of the, uh, so the, of the position of your marks. I'm wondering if uh, your resolution you get is enough for you. And if not, uh, have you been trying to uh, say, use uh, two detectors instead of one? For example, when you have a couple, a couple of cameras, it would be so. It could be a stereo vision or something like that that would be so capable of uh, measuring the exact positions of the objects. Uh, no, we don't use uh, the second uh, channel. We just use uh, one channels. But the optical system that we used for this one is again uh, very focal. It's a very big focal length. It's about uh, uh, 200 millimeter focal length for this uh, optical systems. So uh, based on this uh, optical system, we get a very good uh, resolution for it. Um, this resolution is enough for uh, getting this result about uh, 0 0.5 millimeters in the distant 50 meters. But it's a very uh, interesting uh, solution for this uh, dual channel with uh, stereoscopic systems. But it's very uh, hard to approach in this type uh, of image. So uh, much more uh, errors could be uh, for results. Uh, so it's need to research and uh, to understand which uh, how much uh, errors we can get with this type of dual channel yes i see thank you very much gosha do you have a question yeah well, thanks a lot for very exciting results uh, i have probably a question regarding the the last part so i wonder how many what type of sources do you need to have that uh, forward and uh, and reciprocal like image formation with uh, shadow gram. I mean, are you using just a lamp or a laser? No, um, we. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah. And uh, can you please uh, uh, maybe uh, describe in more details how do you build this shadow gram? Is it some some uh, like stuff for? Uh, some coding, some, uh, I would say, uh, how safely can I, I would say, transfer information with the shadow gram and stuff? Is it for some, uh, I would say, uh, well, for, for safety features, I mean, to, to somehow uh, protect, for some protected information or, or so. So can you please comment? Okay, yeah, thank you for your questions. Uh, yes. Um, Mm, this is standard. There is a standard algorithm. You can find it in any uh, publications. Uh, algorithm for uh, creating this uh, aperture. Uh, it's uh, actually a very standard algorithm. So if you uh, try to find, uh, unfortunately, do you have uh, any any? About, uh, but you can find any 
uh, different type of coded apertures and any algorithms there is uh, in a public so you can use it uh, for your tasks um, different type of coded apertures uh, we used uh, aperture that's called Amura uh, and URA uh, there is uh, some random uh, random pattern for code aperture there is some URA coded apertures so uh, different uh, numbers of this uh, coded apertures uh, so you somehow predefine it so yes, uh, we if, just, if, okay we uh, create this uh, in a matlab uh, simulated uh, this algorithm and as a result we have some binary image and based on this binary image we uh, give it to uh, uh, CNC machine this uh, laser cutting and we just uh, cut this uh, pattern on this real objects mm -hmm. and sorry and how important is the so you you've, you've noticed here like a scale size of i would say 100 micrometers so is it important for you to have a smaller uh, or i would say bigger size so or the ablation does not allow you for maybe more precise uh i would say formation of this shadowgram called the aperture yes uh, much less uh, the size of this uh, pattern we have much better quality for uh, resulting images we, we will have so uh, for this uh, technology, this laser ablation, we have uh, quality uh, is about maybe uh, 20 micrometers. Um, that wasn't enough for us. So uh, for today, we try to use another technology. It's a technology for photolithograph, uh, and we get much more quality uh, for this code aperture and much less size of this uh, patterns. So yes, this. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. So um, probably one small short question. So regarding the first part with the, those reference marks. So wonder. Uh, so I probably missed something. So uh, you somehow is it like you creating laser systems? Some uh, or what are the exact products that you are creating? So you buy some some parts like lasers, uh, lenses, and stuff. And what is the the technology that is, is so is it uh so it's uh i would say price is behind the technology that you provide or behind the the hard stuff that you 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 build you create you fabricate uh, yes we're just uh, buying some uh, parts some units we don't create any of our lasers uh, detectors we're just uh, building our systems itself uh, so this is uh, our tasks Okay, I see many things, so. So, uh, thank you, Gosha, for the question. Thanks to everyone. Do we have any, any of those? So, okay, then. Uh, I would like to thank Alexander once again for a brilliant talk.